Nina-san, konnichiwa, kara Fort Collins, Colorado, o hisashiburi desu. Masa-san to watashi wa nihonga koishi. Watashi wa modotte idoshitai. <laughs> anyway, I do miss Japan. I miss speaking it. I miss seeing it. I miss uh, reading it. I miss hearing Japanese and living in Japan. I miss it very dearly. Um, I hope you are all doing well. Anyway, I was asked to do a short message for you all. I wish I could do this in person, but daijubu desu ne. As you all know, the Olympics have started, and they're in full swing. Many people from all over the world, athletes, great athletes, the best of their country, are all in Japan right now, competing for that treasure prize of the gold medal. Many of these athletes have been training hard for many, many, many years. And I've heard stories of children, just children, having dreams of being an Olympian and following those dreams until they get to the Olympics. Many of the sermons about the Olympics uh, go into how each athlete, athlete goes into strict training. Hour after hour, day after day, week after week, month after month, years after years, the athletes train. And they train hard. You know, this makes a good message, especially from the book of 1 Timothy 4, 8, where it says, Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Or from 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8, that says, As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who are eagerly looking forward to his return, to his appearing. These are excellent ways of using the Olympics to create wonderful messages of hope and perseverance and training. I want to approach this from a different point of view, though, a little different. Whenever I watch the Olympics, I see Olympians who are proud to represent their country. During the medal presentations, they see the flag lifting up and they hear their national anthem play, and the athletes, they come to tears because they're proud of their country. They're proud of uh, winning that medal and, and seeing how their hard work has paid off. And they're proud of how their country supported them. So when they hear that national anthem, when they see their flag raising, they come to tears. And they remember all the blood, sweat, and tears that went into getting to the Olympics. They are proud to be a citizen of their country. You know, I know recently there are some athletes who are not proud of their country. And sometimes they defy their country. They don't like the flag. They don't like the national anthem. But that's, that's them. But I know that many more of them are proud to represent their country and are humbled whenever they hear their national anthem. A few of them are even Christians <laughs> and they plainly give God and Jesus Christ all the glory. Are you a proud citizen? You know, I know America is not perfect. It's not the perfect country, but I am still proud to be an American. I can assume that you are proud to be a Japanese, a Japanese citizen. You know, if we are proud to be citizens of our countries, we should be even more proud to be citizens of heaven. When you became a Christian, you became a citizen of heaven, a kingdom that's not even here on this world, a citizen of heaven. That's more important 
than being a, an American citizen or a Japanese citizen or an Israeli citizen or an Iranian citizen. It doesn't matter. Philippians 3, 17 to 21 says, Join together in following my example. This is Paul speaking to uh, the people of Philippi. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For, as I have often told you before and now, tell you even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. Paul states in a few verses before these verses, in verses 13 and 14, he says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have a taken hold, have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. God is calling you to press on. He is calling you to keep going. Don't give up. I could hear him in the back of my head. Keep going, keep straining, keep going uh, toward ahead, toward the goal that is ahead. Keep on reading the Bible. Keep on going to church. Keep encouraging one another. Keep fellowshipping with fellow believers. Keep moving forward to our prize in heaven. A crown of life and an embrace by Jesus Christ. You hear that? We get a crown of righteousness, a crown of life, and it's going to be placed on our heads by Jesus Christ. In you know, I, I also see, I also see when I get to heaven that I'm going to be embraced by Jesus Christ. He's going to give us a great big hug, just like the story of the prodigal son. When the son is walking home after failing at life on his own. He walks home humbly. And his father sees him in the distance and he just doesn't wait for him. He runs to him. The father runs to the son. And I picture that when we return to heaven. God, the father and Jesus Christ running toward us. To embrace us. Keep on going. Be proud of your citizenship here. But remember that we are all citizens of heaven. And one day we will all return there and see each other again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray. I pray that you will continue to push us forward. Just like an Olympic coach who pushes on his athletes forward. Father, don't give, us, don't give up on us. Discipline us where we need discipline. Encourage us where we need encouragement. And teach us the proper way to live our lives here on earth. Help us to overcome any obstacles in our path. And Father, we pray that you just send your Holy Spirit to us. To comfort us, to guide us. To give us wisdom on how to live our lives. Help us to be holy as you are holy. And Father, we can't wait. We can't wait to get to heaven where our true citizenship is. And to see you. And to receive the crown of righteousness being placed on our head by your son, Jesus Christ. Father, please be with my family in Japan. I miss them dearly. Let them know that we love them, that I love them, <laughs> and wish to be with them again. 
I miss him so much. And if it is your will, Father, unite us once again. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I do. I hope to see you all again. Meet you in person. You're always invited here. I have a, a nice home for you. Bedrooms, a uh, few bedrooms that are empty uh, for you to stay in. And uh, come on over. I'd be happy to give you a tour of, of Fort Collins, Colorado. Take you up to the beautiful mountains and our beautiful camp. And it would just be lovely to see you again. God bless you all. We'll see you again.